another edition of Wings Weekly. Jake Lang connect here along with head coach Francis Anzalone and uh, coach a, a kind of a painful weekend for the uh, Aberdeen Wings as the, you had a home and home with Brookings uh, lost there in the Larson Ice Center and then come home on a Saturday night uh, here in the Odie and uh, the Brookings Blizzard able to, to creep up and creep past the Wings uh, with uh, as, as far as the standings go with they pick up another two points. Uh, Maybe we can break down this, this weekend a little bit and some of the what, what you thought of Friday night's matchup to start with uh, there in Brookings, uh, a game where uh, the Blizzard definitely came you know, came out with some pop and were playing. You know they had a big crowd in there. I think they said that it was the second sellout in a row that they've been getting much bigger crowds. Uh, personally, I think that has a lot to do with the SDSU and high school basketball and all that sort of stuff being being over with. But either way, uh, it was a, a pretty loud building. And uh, they definitely kind of fed off of that, it seemed like. And and, uh, and your wings maybe a, a little little bit of a slow start there Friday night. What were your what do you take away from that game? I thought they out momentumed us on Friday night. I just thought they were way better in the momentum situations that occurred in the game. They were much better on faceoffs. Uh, I don't think we had a great start. They capitalized on their chances. Uh, at one nothing, we had a, a shorthanded breakaway. We did not score. Ten seconds later, they come up the rink. They score on a weird shot, um, and now they're up two nothing. Uh, they were just much better in momentum. And then I thought, uh, in the second period, and then well into the third, we really got playing, and we recommitted to playing our game. We had a lot of good scoring chances in the first period, Jay, but we had Brookings type scoring chances, which is fine. You take them however you can get them, but we didn't score. And they had a 2-0 lead after one. And then we settled in. We started playing down low in the offensive zone. We started bringing pucks to the net. We started getting to the net. We did a nice job coming back uh, in the game, but it was too little too late. So for me, it was all about momentum in that game. They were just much better in the momentum moments, and they skated away with a, a one-goal win, which is usually what happens. A yeah, 4-3 loss and you know, with the extra attack route and, and uh, able to, to bring it. You know, make it, it made it interesting anyway, and I know a lot of people that were listening and, and watching on Fast Hockey read, remarked to me on Saturday night that they thought, oh, they thought for sure that you know, your wings were going to be able to tie it and go into overtime, pick up some, uh, some uh, another point or two in the standings there, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Um, then we go on to Saturday night, and Saturday night you know, they come, come into our building, and uh, I wouldn't say either team really had a slow start in that particular game. It felt much more even throughout and uh, some good scoring chances and in fact on Friday night 52 shots on goal for the Wings and uh, as you mentioned a handful of scoring chances and then again on Saturday night not as many shots on goal but it did seem like there were some pretty good chances where there was a, a puck at skates and uh, maybe a bouncing puck over a blade you know, on an open, open side of the net or whatever some decent chances but things just didn't quite go uh, the way you'd like. What do you take away from Saturday night's matchup? I agree with you about the start. I thought both teams had a good start. Both teams had a fast-paced start, but a controlled start, and it just balanced out to a real even first period. Um, they score uh, another power play goal. They just they won a battle in front and kind of put the puck uh, around our goaltender. It's, it's really that simple. I thought we got way more urgent and way more desperate as the game went along. We played really hard on Saturday night in the second and the third period, and we deserved a goal. We, we, we deserved a goal, but we did not get a goal because life is not fair, and hockey is not fair, and that's the way she goes. So I, I, I was really proud of our effort. Um, I thought we generated good chances in the third period. What I liked about our game on Saturday is after giving up more than we would have liked to have given up scoring chance-wise on Friday, we gave up virtually nothing on Saturday. We made individual mistakes on the power play, and they got shorthanded chances, but we recovered. Our goalie made one really, really good save in the game on a shorthanded, I think it was a two-on-one where they got a whack. They got another two-on-one. Ryan Cook recovered, made a nice individual play. They sprung a guy out of the box. He missed the net on a breakaway. But outside of those little individual moments, we really did not give up very much five-on-five. Five. We. We, we counted under 10 scoring chances against on Saturday night. We gave up 10 in the first 23 minutes alone on, uh, on Friday. So, uh, you know, listen, it's, it's, a, it's crappy timing, but I thought we played very, very hard. Our effort and our want to win was, uh, was real good. And so for that, I can't complain. Well, and we talked a little bit on Saturday uh, before the game about the role that special teams would have. 
uh, you know, kind of coincidentally uh, versus Austin. We talked about it um, like there was a spotlight on it, and maybe we, I felt like maybe going in with uh, with Brookings that it wouldn't be that much of a of a role player or, role, or factor, but it, it ended up being being really a, a huge difference where they go three or four on their power play on Friday night, uh, and and uh, I think one of three yeah. in, on yeah. Saturday night. Uh, wings were one of seven on Friday night and 0 of six yeah. on Saturday night. So that was pretty lopsided, and they ended up scoring a handful of goals on the power play. That really ended up being uh, the difference maker, I think, in both games. Really, um, what, are you, what are your thoughts there? Well, honestly, on Friday night, uh, the goals that they scored on the power play were—I don't believe they were structural breakdowns. Uh, they were like one of their goals they scored. Um, their third goal was a—it was a scorer's goal. The kid that shot it. I mean, the puck had eyes. Good for him. Um, two of them can't go in. That's the bottom line. And then uh, on Saturday night, uh, I like I said, I thought they won a battle in front. The puck went by our goalie. I, I was a little disappointed in our power play. Like, I thought we had good movement uh, at times. And then at other times, I thought we forced. Matt Pulver made a beautiful play to Tucker DeYoung at the tail end of the power play on Saturday to tie the game at one. And then I thought that we tried to make that same play all night long and we talked about it we've got to do a better job as a staff in that situation of obviously explaining it better to the guys because we kept trying to kind of make that same play Jay and a lot of times when you score one way on the power play it's very rare you're going to score a second and a third goal that way so we earned some power plays in the game on Saturday because we played more like we need to play heavy hard take care of the puck hang on to it make them defend us it earned us some power plays we just, we weren't able to capitalize and do enough with it. Did we have some good looks? Yes. Did we need to be better? Yes. Absolutely. Well, and you mentioned, uh, I wanted to, to, I guess, compliment uh, the, the eyes and the, the uh, beautiful pass that uh, Pulver had. It was actually right below me, so I could see the line, line that it took, and he had to thread the needle. There was maybe, you know, six, eight inches of space there, and he found De Young on the back door. So uh, good job uh, for Matt and the whole team there in that effort, uh, doing it uh, again. Nice goal for the for the wings there. Unfortunately, there were more of them, but as you said, you know, different opportunities. You know, one of the things that Coach Brown and Coach Gratton talked to me about in between periods was shooting low on the goaltender and trying to crash the net and get uh, get some shots, um, second and third opportunities. Um, and there wasn't a lot of that. It seemed like a lot of the shots were you know at the chest and in the glove of. Uh, of Koo Michael, and uh, he was able to to hold and and cover up and just not, and take away some of those second and third opportunities. Uh, that's something that you would echo that uh, you'd like to have seen more of. Uh, yes, but here's what I tell you: like I thought, the times that we shot low, we went to the net so hard that we were too on top of the goalie, and right. that's something that we're going to work at this week. Um, I thought that, um, like like here's what I would tell you. Sometimes when we've had great, well, all the time pretty much, at least in the second half, we, we've had, when we've had great efforts on a Saturday night and we haven't scored to the level that we've wanted to score and we've been able to come back on a Monday and a Tuesday and in our meetings and in our video, just talk about the scoring chances and then how can we go out and practice and replay these situations and get confidence and bang them in. We've usually come out that next Friday night and played pretty well and showed growth um, so I'm excited about that, about that this week because there's kind of been a correlation there, Jay, where we've played hard on a Saturday, we haven't scored, and we've come back to work, and we've worked on offense on a Monday, Tuesday, and we've played well offensively on, on Friday. And it's those 7-5 Austin games that I can't stand yeah. where we make uncharacteristic defensive mistakes, or it's the loss in Brookings on Friday that burns my behind at times because they got more chances than I thought they deserved not to take anything away from them. I just didn't think we were totally being us all the way on Friday. And then we got going, but it was a little late in the game. Saturday, I thought it was very different. I, I didn't think we gave up much. We generated some. And then in the third, we were, we were so, we wanted to score so bad that we almost went to the net too dang hard. Yeah, yeah. And that happens, that's normal. It's just the timing of the year. It's a, it's a tough time of the year to be, to be learning those lessons. But we'll take one more stab at it this week because uh, like we talked about early in the week here, it is not too late. It's, it's going to be a little harder now, but it's not too late. That is true. So, um, um, you're going to need a little help though. I mean, if Brookings wins out, then you know, there's nothing, there, 
you know, so they, they essentially are in control of their own destiny. Now the Wings are going to need a little help, but it, as you said, certainly isn't, isn't too late. One of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit too, Saturday night I thought was a much more, uh, well, not more maybe, because Friday was a physical game, but I liked the, the level of physicality that the Wings played with on Saturday night. And it, you know, and it, interesting that it wasn't exactly the usual suspects. I mean, you had guys like you know, Carter Rue gets hit of the game, and uh, Jackson Grollum, I saw him you know, taking on Faulkner a couple of times. And uh, you know, a smaller guy that you know finishes a check hard, and, and uh, so a lot of the wings that uh, I thought played played very physical and aggressive uh, throughout that that matchup, and I, it's just something I noticed a handful of times where we had undersized guys going after bigger guys and, and hitting them hard. So um, you know, that that was it was good to see too that that level of as you said want to and and uh, effort was certainly there, and you could see it you know on the on the boards and in the corners for sure. Um, I tell you what, we're going to take a, a quick break here and hear from one of our sponsors. When we return, we'll talk about the health of the team, also about what's coming up with Austin. Let's make a taco. <laughs> no, seriously. Start with a tortilla, soft tortilla, warm it, kiss it, don't kiss it. Chicken? How about tequila lime chicken? Now we're cooking. Slice this, peel that, snip those. Salsa? Verde. Cheese? Cotilla. Oh, forgot to mention. Guac. That's better. See, anyone can make a taco, but we're not anyone. We're Qdoba, and these are knockout tacos. Qdoba Mexican Eats. Choose flavor. Welcome back as Wings Weekly continues. Jay Klein connect with Coach Anzalone. And Coach, uh, you know, I talked a little bit uh, before the break about the health of the team and that we kind of touch on that. Big hit to uh, Kyle Seamers in the corner, uh, contact to the head, and uh, he was clearly rocked and uh, made his way to the bench. Uh, under his own power, which was great to see, but uh, definitely uh, a concern there. Um, how is Kyle doing? Kyle's doing okay. He's concussed. He'll be out for the weekend. He's a really, really tough kid. He's a stubborn kid in a good way. He did not want to come out of that game. He didn't want to let his teammates down or his coaches down. He needed to be benched by the doctors. Um, and he uh, saw medical personnel after the game on Saturday night. Uh, he'll be out, but he's a really tough kid. Got out of bed bright and early this morning, wanted to be around the boys at the rink. And um, that's hockey, that's the way it goes. We'll try to keep him in good spirits. He'll be in good spirits and he'll, he'll root for the boys from afar. That's how it goes in hockey. They are the toughest athletes around, yeah. as you well know. Without a doubt. Well, happy to hear that and uh, wish uh, Kyle the very best in his recovery. Another hockey player uh, for the Avenue Wings that's recovering as well. I have some people asking, you know, where's, where's Heakins been and why is, why is he on? I thought I saw him in the owner's box and, you know, so on. Um, Austin Heakins going through a, a recovery period here too, huh? Yeah, Austin had uh, to have uh, surgery. He had a, a hernia. The procedure went well. Uh, he's up on his feet. He's moving around great. He's in good spirits. And uh, I really want to compliment Austin. It's kind of a unique situation how he got back here. We've, I think we've talked about it on this program. Most people know he, uh, he just he wanted to come back and be a wing in the worst way. He loves the community. He loves the culture. He loves what we're trying to do with the program. And I, I tell you what, he brought a lot to this group. He made guys feel safe. He was a really, really good veteran leader. He's been in the battle before. Um, tenacious four-checker. Um, and he's another one that's, that's cheering from afar, trying to help the guys as best as he can without being in the actual lineup. But I'm glad Austin's surgery went well. He's up on his feet. Uh, he's around the boys, and I know he's keeping his fingers crossed for something great to happen in Austin this weekend. All right. Well, again, yeah, we wish uh, Austin he can the best in his recovery as well. Well, Coach, uh, this weekend you, we talk, touched on it a little bit. You'll have the Austin Bruins. We're going to have to, to win both and hope for a, a, at least one Brookings loss, and uh, we'll keep an eye, of course, on the Magicians, too, as they are now tied after going overtime with Bismarck on Saturday night. So you'll need a little help to get into the playoffs, but uh, obviously the chances are it's still there. I mean, and, and a very real possibility, something that your boys are going to be working towards. What do you, you know, Austin, you've had some success with here lately, at least in the OD. Um, they play tough in Riverside Arena. What do you expect to see from the Bruins coming up? For me, uh, for me, it's all about the Aberdeen Wings. We have to win the game on Friday night. It's our first must-win game of the year. We've approached some games like must-wins, but this is our first must-win game of the year on Friday. If we win the game on Friday, we are guaranteed to at least be playing for a playoff spot on Saturday night. There are, and, and I'll tell you right now, Brookings the Magician, I don't even know who those teams are. 
Um, there's only two teams we're concerned about, like Aberdeen 1A, Austin 1B, just because they're our opponents. So we, we've got to go in there. We've got to play a really good team game. Some way, somehow, we have to score one more goal than they do. We could get outshot 60 to 20. We got to get one more goal than them. It could be an 8-7 game. It could be a 1-0 game. It could be 5-1 us. We've got to score one more goal than them. We have to find a way to win. Uh, it's our first must-win game of the year. So yes, they're tough. Yes, they shoot the puck from everywhere. Yes, they come out fast. And it's up to every individual on our team to prepare the way he needs to prepare to be at an optimal level. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. We've got to do the job on Friday night, and it'll be a good, good test for our team. If we can do it, it should spark us for Saturday when at least we'll be playing for a playoff spot. Then what happens with those other teams that I don't know who they are? Like, we'll, we'll see. what We're just focused on Friday night, Jay. We have to have a hell of a game. Well, looking forward to it for sure. Um, Coach, one of the things I wanted to talk about too, you know, last week I <clears throat> stopped out and watched practice just for a little bit as I was kind of passing by and saw some new faces or different faces out on the ice that uh, aren't on the roster and aren't, uh, aren't uh, part of the team and aren't in game, uh, in playing in games and so on, but they are practicing with the team. Can you talk a little bit about some of them? Yeah, over the last couple of weeks, we've really tried to bring players in to practice with us and be around the guys, and this is everyone from players that we've tendered, players that we might like to have be part of the program sometime in the future, players that our scouting staff evaluated at previous events during the season that they wanted to get a look at around our guys. It's not something that we did a ton my first year when I was here with Travis Winter, but the longer we've done this, we've decided to do it more because it's, it's really, really invaluable to see prospective players around your current team you can talk with them on the phone so you're blue in the face about the weight room, the facilities we have, the way we try and do things. But when you get them out here, uh, it, it really does a lot for their knowledge and your knowledge of them. And I mean, anytime you can bring in a young player that you may have high hopes for and let them see this crowd and experience a game night, it's charming. It's our yeah. best recruiting tool. So we've had a lot of different guys in. Um, we've got one week left in the regular season. We hope to be playing next week. Um, and we'll actually have uh, two more guys here this week. So it's a really, really good tool and it provides us one more opportunity to see these players in one more setting that can be invaluable to the evaluation process. Excellent, okay. All right, well that'll pretty much wrap up this week's Wings Weekly. We wanna thank all of you for, for listening and watching and of course, thank Coach Andalone for taking some time to talk to us and kinda let us in behind the scenes. And we'll be back next week and see you then.